a stressful day for Kobe with maybe some words said afterwards. Lander turns into Luke Rowe 2.0 and Ineos lose the wheel accidentally in this chaotic finish to stage three of the Vuelta a Andalusia. A medium mountain stage that was supposed to be finishing in a sprint from Lucena to Otura. Germay and Trentin and Serrano, the sort of guys interested in this finish, but there were some medium mountains beforehand. Break went pretty well in control, as definitely in, compared to stage one. Ineos had Wurf on the front. They got I think, Pucho, Narais, Dunbar, Rodriguez, Turner, Sheffield, young squad, particularly the last four you're seeing here. Rodriguez, their man on GC. I'd kind of like them to send this squad to the Vuelta, actually. It'd be pretty fun. But UAE, now... Let me know if I'm if I'm stupid. What if they simply didn't pace? These are the last two shallow climbs. You see how fast they're going. Draft hugely important. It's like a Poggio sort of climb, and they lit it up with Polance. And I think Trenton was in the wheel, and then Kobe was third wheel, eating a lot of wind. It's not like being mid pack. Yeah, I know you want to be front when there's a twist to descent like this, which you see the breakaway doing. That's fine. You can maybe surge at the end of the climb. But I always wonder, like, just because you have the jersey. Do you have to pace? What would happen if you didn't pace? Then Bike Exchange might have to try and do something with their riders to actually set up Yates. Instead, you do the work for them, putting Kovi a bit on the limit and also him not having domestiques when the attacks will come later. You see how hard they were working. So I'm sure there's a reason for it. It's the done thing in cycling, but they went a little bit hard. Then with Kemner attacking, all the other GC contenders realizing UAE can't respond to this, immediately bridging across, Landa actually following a move straight away with Dunbar there as well. I'm not sure if it's Tejada or Lopez that initially followed it. O'Connor, the tall Australian on Azure's uh, Citroen who had the good Tour de France result last year, one of the only GC contenders in this group, attacks Simon Yates is in the group behind in the Gerolsteiner kit, closing Van Servenant's there as well. And O'Connor's actually one of the only GC guys in this group, and so he won't get too much assistance until he joins well actually it's a while until anyone joins Simon Yates and this is why racing in Spain is often so good up and down there can be crosswinds they call it high mountains but even the medium mountain stages can explode eventually Miguel Angel Lopez who I think looks the best GC contender in this race he's had to do a lot of work himself he bridges across the problem for these two Yates and Lopez is that Dunbar and Landa are here in domestic roles riding defensively they're not going to contribute and they have Ineos who are riding for Rodriguez and Bahrain for Haig and Poles behind trying to chase back. So it's two men really pacing at the front, two pretty light guys as well. They are joined by Van Servenant and O'Connor who are willing to put in as well as Christian Rodriguez for Total. But with 28 Ks to go to the finish, a little bit of wind and really no more climbs of note and some pretty decent engines in Turner, and I think Movistar had a rider as well. There was no way this break of four GC guys and three guys sitting on was going to make it. So it got brought back, and you think, okay, they're going to rise to the finish, that'll all be fine. With the sprinters, Trentin and Germay dropped, there was a bit of a vacuum of who wants to really pace, and attacks started flowing. This is Ben Turner of Ineos, big ruler type, who's already looking very, very good. He got brought back. Other attacks reigned this time. Well, Turner again, and look at this. This reminds me of Ruch and Elisander in Paranese last year, I think on stage six. <laughs> the Uskatel runner was like, you look like a pretty good draft to sit on, but then doesn't pull through because probably Turner redlined him. And that gets brought back again. Another move, this time from Dumbos. Ineos were keen to give their domestiques a chance to get up the road, even though they had Rodriguez in this group, and Kobe was closing this down himself, uh, which, yeah, pretty good effort. And then Astana again, this time with Turner and Kobe. As I said, he didn't really have teammates in this group, so it was bold closing down a move of a domestique like Dunbar. Caruso goes, another attack, another attack, I think, from Kemner, who'd attacked on the climb, this time with Magnus Sheffield of Ineos on the left, marked by Mikhail Lander. Eventually, Bahrain say enough. No mas. They pace on the front with Caruso. Everyone's <laughs> thrown haymakers at each other for the last 10 kilometers, and they're going to pretty much ride it in to the finish with Lando Caruso. And then Haig is about mid-pack. Ben Turner's thinking, am I hallucinating? Did I go over my limit too much? That I'm seeing people doing cross-country skiing on the road on the right-hand side and 25 degrees in Andalusia on the south tip of Spain. I don't know. Watch out for Yates tomorrow. 6K, 9% climb at the start. He could be lethal. Anyway, Lander pulls off. 3Ks to go. The 3K rule applies with crashes, which there is one. They have this 
big looping 180 degree bend and Narvaez slips out, his front wheel goes, takes out Rodriguez behind him, who you can see, uh, you can't really see Narvaez behind the Astana rider. Haig is on the right hand side too with Sosa. Those two get caught up, they're right behind Rodriguez. I don't know if Narvaez tried to pedal through the corner or I actually think he just tried to correct his front wheel a little bit and he, and he went. Anyway, the camera was on there for a second, they got up, they looked fine, but just back to the action. Camner going again. You remember he won a Catalunya stage last year against Verona. Incredibly strong on these sort of parkour. He's being closed down by, I think, either Tejada or Lutschenko with Magnus Sheffield on the wheel from Ineos, who probably had no idea of what was going on behind him, but reacted well going for this stage. It looks like he just rides across to Kamna, he gave a little bit of an attack to get distance from the Astana rider, sees that Kamna's struggling, goes straight past him in the saddle, big seated power from the end. He's a good, got a good time trial pedigree, Magnus Sheffield, and with Miguel Angel Lopez, the only rider really chasing on the front and probably a 10 to 15 kilo weight difference. This one was a wrap. Sheffield already making sure the jersey was done up in the last 400 meters respecting the race, honoring his sponsors. 19 years old, Magnus Sheffield, the American. He skipped U23, incredible record in the juniors, rode for rally last year as an 18 year old and takes his first pro victory in a dot pro race, his second stage race at 19 years old. I don't know what he's gonna develop into. Incredible domestique for Quinn Simmons back in 2019. He looks versatile, extremely powerful, good time trialist. The results don't show it, but in Bessege on the climbs, early climbs, he was incredibly strong, and I can't wait to see what he develops into. We saw when the sprinters group was coming behind, Haig and Sosa rolling across the line about 35 to 36 seconds after the first G1, the GC group, Rodriguez and Narvaez even later. UAE though, is there, I don't know, a bit of lip reading action if anyone can help me. Do you reckon my body language radar is sensing that maybe there's some agreement from either Covey that the plan wasn't the best one today to light it up. Anyway, Sheffield takes the stage ahead of Simon Clark. What a pickup by Israel. Premier Tech, DeVolf third, Ben Turner fourth, Van Seven on fifth. In terms of GC, this is incorrect, Haig, Sosa, Rodriguez were given the same time as group one. Haig is somewhere on about 10 seconds and Rodriguez as well. It's all to play for in the coming stages. Tomorrow though, it's like a back to front stage. They open with a 7K 9% climb, which I mean, maybe they'll do it slowly. I don't know. It gets easier after that, but this race hopefully for our enjoyment could be split apart early stage four. Yes, there's no big mountain top finishes, but it's been some attacking racing, particularly the last 30 kilometers today. And Andalusi was very exciting. I'll see you at the recap tomorrow. Ciao.